Hello, everybody. My name is Barry Johns, and welcome back to another edition of Studio Top. So, you got some pops, you got some clicks, you got some latency. In other words, when you hit that guitar, it's like, man, oh, there it is. Now it's coming back. That delay is called latency. And your recording process? Well, let's get to it. All right, all right, all right. So if you're watching this, you're probably relatively new to recording. And my motivation and my inspiration for doing this video is I actually helped one of my viewers out uh, who contacted me via social media. I was having a problem because they were getting latency in their recordings and uh, they had certain ideas, maybe what was causing it, but none of those made any sense to me. And I was like, Wow. So I said, I got to figure this out and I got to find out what's going on. And it really was the root of all causes. When it comes to you've got latency, you've got pops and cracks and stuff and your sound source as you're trying to record clicks, things like that. <clears throat> That's almost always an issue of the buffer setting in your digital audio workstation. Every digital audio workstation has under the preference panel, okay, or somewhere within its menu system, okay, the ability to adjust and set that buffer while you're recording and or mixing. This is something that you need and must become very familiar with if you want to be able to maximize what you can do with your existing computer, okay? So what does a buffer do? Okay, so Obviously, let's put this down in cornbread English and talk about how your audio gets in and out of your interface, okay? Let's focus on the end because that's really what we're talking about right now. And that is you're sending an analog source that has to be converted into ones and zeros. It has to have that analog to digital conversion that happens in your recording interface, okay? And then so your interface is doing the converting from analog to digital. And then it sends that converted signal down that, that cable, whether it's USB, Thunderbolt, or whatever. Uh, it's sending that signal down that cable into your computer. Now your computer has to write, okay, onto the hard drive what it's recording while you're playing, right? And so that, depending on what's going on, your computer's doing a lot of different things at that time. It's got an operating system to run. It's got other applications to run. It's got graphics stuff it's got to deal with. There's so many things that your computer's got to deal with that are happening in the background. And depending on how powerful your computer is, you know, you may have to do some workarounds to get it to optimize, okay? And so um, because of that, your CPU, okay, is doing the bulk of the work. Now, if you're just doing one or two tracks, you're not likely to run into a lot of issues. But once you start really pushing the boundaries of the ability for that CPU to process, that's when buffer settings and things like that have to come into play. Okay, so what's the correlation between the buffer and the CPU, okay? So here's how this works. I'm gonna put this in cornbread English, okay? We're gonna keep this real simple, uh, and I wanna keep that on the surface like that. So don't overanalyze everything I'm saying here. But the bottom line is, if you're su if you're suffer, you're suffering if you're not having a good time. If your buffer's set low, what that's doing is putting what that's doing is enabling things to get in and out of your DAW faster. Okay, so if you go to a low buffer like a 32 or a 64, you can get those ones and zeros in and out of that computer really fast. Okay, to the point where you're not getting any audible or noticeable latency, okay? You understand the correlation? Buffer low, low latency. What do you think buffer high is? We'll get to it in a second, okay? But I'm sure you can figure out where this is going already. So your buffer set low means your CPU has to do what? If it's allowing it to read and write faster, which the faster it reads and writes and processes all the other data that, has to, that a CPU has to process to run all of the various applications, right? If you set that buffer low, it means that CPU has to do what? Work harder, okay? That CPU's got to work harder. So you're going to strain the efforts of your CPU depending on how many tracks you're doing, okay? So the lower the setting, the harder your CPU has to work 
to be able to get those ones and zeros in and out of your computer, okay? If you raise that buffer higher, and for many of us, the highest is 4096, but that's irrelevant, whatever your highest is. Uh, anything above that's not going to matter at the end of the day. So you may have options above 4096, but it just something that makes it look good. It doesn't really do anything. Okay, it doesn't give you any other advantages. Okay, so anyway, you set your buffer higher, which means what? Your CPU is working less. It doesn't have to work as hard because it's not reading and writing at the same time, okay? It's mostly reading with some writing, but very little of it, okay? And so ultimately at the end of the day, if your buffer's set low, you're gonna have low latency in recording, when you're ready to mix, raise your buffer up. Hopefully you followed that. Let me do that one more time. As a strategy, if you are tracking, whether that's the initial tracking or whether you're going in to do overdubs later on and overdubs get a little more challenging, okay? Because you've already stacked so much causing your CPU to work harder. But regardless, when you're tracking, you need your buffer set low unless you have some type of DSP. Another conversation. I got videos on that, go watch that. But if you're tracking and you want low latency while you're recording, your buffer's gotta be low, okay? It's gotta be set low, a 32 or 64, okay? Some people can handle a 128. It depends on how fast your interface is, how fast it gets those ones and zeros out of the interface and two, your CPU and your uh, SSD to be able to do your writing, okay? And so um, that's how all of that works. I gotta go get my dogs, they're barking in the backyard, I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. Dogs cause me all kinds of problems. Let me get comfortable here. Okay, because we're about to wrap this thing up anyway. So hopefully you've got that. If you want to be able to record with lower latency, take your buffer low. If you want to record, if you want to be able to mix and not worry about that, take your buffer high. Low buffer, recording tracking, high buffer mixing. Switch them back and forth as you're changing your workflow. Okay, now you're not always, depending on how fast your CPU is, you're not always going to be able to track. You're just not, okay? If you've got 60, 70 tracks built in there, you got a lot of plugins, you got a lot of virtual instruments, your computer name might, may not be able to go down to that low buffer. It may be beyond your CPU's ability to process all of that. So if you're running into situations to where you've got your sessions done, okay, and you're still trying to do some overdubbing and things like that, and your computer simply won't work, it will not run without giving you errors and things like that while you're tracking, Okay, that means at that point, if you've already adjusted your buffer down to an area to where you know a setting to where that's acceptable latency to you, and depending on what you're tracking, that can change. Okay, uh, guitarists don't tend to need as much as vocalists and keyboardists need it really low uh, with virtual instruments because that's very, you know, immediate touch sensitive. So a lot of these things come into play. But the bottom line is, if, if you're trying to raise your buffer low to where the setting you typically would track at and the lowest setting you could get at still gives you latency, it means your computer's not fast enough and there's workarounds and things that you can do and that's another video that's, you know, print your stuff, freeze your tracks, et cetera, all kinds of things like that. But the bottom line is I may have just spoke a bunch of things you don't understand. That's fine. You still got a lot to learn most likely if you're watching this video, okay? So keep that in mind. Buffer low for tracking, buffer high for mixing. Simple as that. Go find your buffer setting. Most likely, it's under the preference of your DAW. Play around with it. Experiment with it. This alone, if you're just getting started, okay, will make a lot of difference for you, okay? So put your comments down below if this has happened to you and you're struggling with these things, or maybe you're having some problems unrelated. Maybe that maybe you're getting pops and clicks and things like that, but you're not sure how to deal with that. Maybe it's not a buffer setting. Maybe it's something else. Well, maybe I've got some ideas on that. So let's put down some comments down below. Tell us what you think about it. I love getting engaged in these type of conversations, okay? But until then, okay, do me a favor. Hit that like button, that subscribe button, and that notification bell, okay, so you know when I got new videos. I really appreciate if you support this channel. I work hard to put content out for you folks. Look, I'm just another guy out there just like you. Been at this for over 40 years. Okay, been obsessed with it for 40 years. Learned a lot along the way, so I'm willing to share what I've learned, okay? And so if I can help you, I'm here to do that, all right? And so hit that like, and subscribe, and that notification bell, and help me too if I'm helping you. If I'm not helping you and you can't stand me, well, go watch somebody else. You're not gonna hurt my feelings, okay? But until next time, I hope every one of you have a great and wonderful day. Bye-bye.